Hi, I'm Adam from Truth Software, and I'm going to show you how to produce slick, branded reports with Truth over the course of three separate videos. In the first video, we'll be covering the fundamentals of report design and building a simple report showing two cash flow scenarios the current position and a what if. In the second video in the series, we'll show you how to customise Truth and apply your corporate identity and branding to your reports. In the final installation, we'll look at some efficiency tips, such as the search and replace tool, as well as using smart text, which automatically populates text into reports based on the client's cash flow. First things first, we'll walk through the layout of the financial plan module in Truth. You'll find links to various key points in the video in the description, so if you need to jump back to this later, you can do so. On the current plan menu in Truth, there are various options. The menu is divided into sections that group these functions together. We won't go into all of these in depth today, but most of them, such as save, rename, and copy, are hopefully self-explanatory. We'll cover the layout options, which control branding of reports, in our second video. The efficiency tools on the right will be covered in the third video. Before we look at creating a new plan layout, Remember your plan can be templated. This means all your preferences and layout are preset. All you need to do is add any client specific comments and hit print. The layout you can see here is one of my templates. You'll notice the sections correspond to the printed plan we just looked at. Copying in a template plan saves a lot of time and effort. But let's explore for now how a plan design can be created from scratch. To copy in a template, click on the new plan option. A list of templates is shown. Let's start with a blank plan this time around. In the lower part of the screen we have two separate areas. On the right we have the plan design or layout. This shows the structure of our plan. As we build it we'll see the layout taking shape here. On the left we have our library. This is a list of elements that can be added to your written plan and they're broken down into three areas. Statements includes all of the charts and statements that appear in Truth. Items includes each of the item types available on the FactPind screen. Text can be used to store any standard suitability text you would like to be included in your reports in the form of Word documents. We can use this library to drag and drop elements into our plan design on the right. We have some additional design tools above the plan design window on the right. I'll cover scenario and catastrophe view slightly later. There's a link in the description to these below. If you move the mouse over any of these tools, you'll see a helpful tooltip reminding you of what each button does. The first button we'll look at is the insert section button. As the tooltip says, clicking on this button will insert a new section into our financial plan. Let's see how this looks. Report sections function like chapters in the financial plan. As you can see here, this is shown by an S on the left, a section number, and a section title, all of which is underlined. To delete a report element, select it, and then click on the Delete button above. Note that the new section which we just added has now disappeared. I'm now going to add two sections so we can look at the Properties tool. With the first section heading selected, if we click on the Properties tool above the Plan Design window, this will bring up the properties for the section heading. The properties can also be viewed or changed by right-clicking the section heading or by clicking on the Properties option on the far right of the screen. Each component can have its properties changed and the options will vary depending on the component selected. We'll see later how cash flow charts, for example, have more properties, such as overlaying another scenario or showing a market crash. In this instance, let's use the Properties tool to rename the first section Your Income and the other to Your Expenditure. We mentioned earlier that the plan design uses a drag and drop mechanism. We can illustrate this using the two section headings. If we drag Your Expenditure and drop it above Your Income, 
This moves the selected element to wherever we drop it. If we drag it back down below your income, you can see that it moves back. To illustrate the client's income and expenditure in the plan, let's drag in some charts. I'm going to select the standard report element, Detailed Income Breakdown, and drag it into the section, Your Income. Next, let's drag in the income tax computation, the income pie chart, and the lifelong income chart. If you're unsure what any statement element represents, you can double click on it to see the chart, table, or statement on screen. Here we've double clicked on the income pie chart. We're also going to add a blank text item into our Your Income section. This is to allow us to record any conclusions. In much the same way, we can flesh out the section on expenditure. As before, we simply drag and drop elements to the position where we would like them to appear in the report. We're nearing the end of this video now, but before we finish, let's add a further section to look at the client's cash flow, with a comparison of two scenarios. Earlier, we mentioned the Scenario and Catastrophe View buttons. The Scenario View button allows you to get an instant overview of which scenario each statement or chart in the report is looking at. The Catastrophe View button gives us the same simple overview for catastrophes. For this client, we have two scenarios, current position and what if. You can see here that all the statements we've included so far have ticks in the column for current position. These statements are all looking at the current position. Dragging two copies of the capital chart into the report allows us to configure one for each scenario. Let's rename the first cash flow current position by right clicking on it. Let's rename the second one cash flow what if. Notice I've placed a tick in the what if column for the second chart rather than current position. Truth now knows to print this statement for our alternative scenario. We're also going to drag in a third copy of the cash flow chart. When we were looking at the properties window earlier, I mentioned that cash flow charts in particular have a wide range of properties. As well as pagination options, cash flow charts have a special tab within the properties window called cash flow settings. If we click on this, we can see two unique options. Simulate market fall demonstrates a market crash simulation in the chosen scenario. We won't cover this today, but I will include a link in the description to our market crash simulator video. Overlay chart allows us to show two cash flows alongside each other on the same chart, providing even more emphasis to the points we're trying to illustrate to our client. In this case, let's use this overlay chart option and choose to overlay our what if scenario on top of our current position. We can also change the description of the report elements to indicate what's happening. Before we print, let's add an appendix containing some of the assumptions used in planning. To do this, we can use the items library on the left to drag in the clients and their partners' personal details. This will automatically insert all the data contained in the client and partner items on the fact find screen into our report. We could also include details, for example, of all personal pensions or ISAs in our report. These items will also include any payment history i.e. details of contributions, withdrawals, and both planned and past pension benefits. We can also drag in a copy of the cash flow assumptions statement element. This will print a comprehensive list of all inflows and outflows that are driving our client's cash flow. That's our very simple report built. Hitting print at the top will tell Truth to build the report into a Word document. While this document's being compiled, Let's summarise briefly what we've looked at today. We looked at the layout of the financial plan screen, focusing on the library on the left and the plan design window on the right. We looked at the fundamental building blocks of a report, which are sections and elements. Elements can be anything from the library on the left hand side, i.e. statements or charts from truth, items from the fact find, 
or standard snippets of text. We looked at how we can drag and drop elements into and around our plan, and delete unwanted elements. We saw how we can access the Properties panel for Report Elements by using the Properties button or right-clicking on any element. And finally, we looked at the Scenario and Catastrophe view options and how to change which scenario or catastrophe a report element refers to. So this is our finished report. As it's a Word document, we can add any additional comments post-printing. We can see here the charts and statements we selected. First we have our detailed income breakdown followed by our income tax computation, our income pie chart, and finally our lifelong income chart. Our section on expenditure features a detailed breakdown of the client's outgoings. The expenditure pie chart, and our lifelong expenditure chart. The cash flow section of our report shows the client's pre and post advice positions, as well as both options overlaid on a single chart. Finally, we have our section on assumptions. This shows the client's personal details, their partner's personal details, and a detailed breakdown of all of the assumptions involved in our client's cash flow. You may also notice as we scroll through the plan, we've got our company logo and company name in the header at the top, as well as matching branding in tables and headings. We'll look more closely at this in the next video. I hope you found this video useful. As I mentioned at the start, we've included some helpful links in the description below to key moments in the video so you can use these for navigation and for future reference. Thanks for watching. <laughs>